Good afternoon, folks, and thanks for joining us. We are kicking it with Tim and the Mechanic. I am Tim. He's the Mechanic. Brandon, how you doing today, man? Doing good, man. We're talking kickboxing, so you know it's a beautiful day. Man, and you know what? It's been a busy couple of weeks in kickboxing. I feel like the last two weeks, it's been a nutshell of what a, what kickboxing is. We had everything from, uh, we had Rise, we had K1 kickboxing, we had one championship, we had Infusion, and we had Glory making weird decisions. This is just, this. The, everything about <laughs> kickboxing has been in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> well, we're going to be talking about everything here on the show, and then we're looking at a few stuff in the future. But yeah, Glory has has found their guy to blame and they fired him for the glory 80 fiasco arcadius verjosic is out of the job officially listed as inactive or whatever arcadius is laughing about it because he's like man it wasn't a draw how'd you guys change that to a draw these weird decisions up and down glory has also said they're not refunding pay-per-view guests their idea was like you guys watched 80 90 percent of the fights so You've got the event, basically. So they're not refunding people, but you will get another event later on. Uh, Glory, just making decisions. What do you think, Brandon? Yeah, man, it's weird. It's like, it's like I had said to, to you before, like when, when yep. all this had broke out, you know, I hit you up on Twitter just saying like, hey, it makes it like it makes it seem like they're blaming him for everything that happened, which in which <laughs> in which in which in which, in which he did an interview. And he said, yeah, that's that's really what it is, is that they blamed him for everything because because he went on social media and he had thanked his fans, you know, for for coming out and supporting. But yeah. it's like there are there were fans, like yeah, like like I mean, you can't you like like you know, you're not in control of your fans, you know. Like you have your good fans, you have your bad fans, you know. It's like hey, they're fans of yours, but some fans are gonna act peaceful, be nice, be respectful, mm-hmm. and some fans are gonna are gonna are gonna cause trouble. So that's where I just I just don't get it because also too, you think about it when when the whole melee happened. He was on the mic trying to calm everybody down. You know, his coach was trying to calm every everybody down. Melvin Manoff was trying to calm everybody. The only person who wasn't trying to calm any, anybody down was Bada Hari. He was one really, really exciting them trying to say, hey, I'm here to fight. You know, so that was it. Like, he was saying he was here to fight. So, which means it's kind of telling his fans, hey, we we are here to fight, you know. So, I mean, it, I don't, I mean, I feel bad for a man. Like I said, he was, he was, he was a top five heavyweight. You know, yep. he was making some noise, doing doing well in this fight against Badahari. Yep. You know, but I mean, hey, man, maybe you know, maybe you know, after a couple of months or so, things will cool down. May you know, hopefully, ho- hopefully, uh, you know, the uh, they'll bring him back. You know, and and he, and he, and he can keep on fighting for for glory. It- yeah, it's a weird thing because they're definitely not going to blame Bader because they know where their bread is butter and they got bills to pay. So you're not firing Bader Hari. We know, we get it. Like <laughs> we all know, we've seen, <laughs> we we understand. But to blame Arcadius for Drosik for stuff that his fans did, like wh- why do you even need to blame someone and then have a scapegoat at all? Like like you said, it was I, I didn't expect them to use that playbook, and they did. They used exactly yeah. what you said that they're going to do. They're going to blame this guy. They're going to fire him. It's exactly what happened. But it does. I imagine what they're going to do because the investigation is still ongoing. So they're going to list him as inactive. And then at the end of the investigation, they'll go, oh, it wasn't his fault. Well, you know, he was still punished, but we're we're going to bring him back because I imagine he would just show up in one and like introduce the heavyweight title there or something like that if they let him go, which like, why would you do that? He's headlined two events now. You're not yeah. going to let him go. You're not going to let him go to another organization. But yeah, it's easy. Uh, I mean- yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, one does need heavyweights. They don't really have any heavyweights. So I mean, I mean, hey, he would be he would be a big siding for them. Yep. Yeah, I know. And he, I don't know. He's an interesting guy because he also doesn't seem that interested in like the sport. Like if he got fired from glory, he's like, oh, whatever. I got my degree in business management. I'll just go to something else. Like this isn't the main thing I'm really into right now. Yeah, he's yeah. an interesting guy. But it is a weird thing that they changed it to a draw. There is no kickboxing oversight. And like MMA has lots of oversight on the records boxing is oversight on the records but glory changed it to a draw and that's kind of the last word in it there's no one else that can say no that was obviously a no contest right yeah yeah i mean hey you you see you see how you see how one gets down sometimes too you know with, with like chatri you know he'll change something where like oh no this person this person won one by these rules but not by these rules and then next you know they'll be like oh no we're changing it or no this person is getting back in the tournament somehow yeah. Hey man, it's it's that it, that that's how it is sometimes. Yeah, one one is almost transparently kind of funny with what they do of like we're taking it to the board so that we can make the decision we want. So it's like well, we have some oversight, which is the board, but like we're the board. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, uh, yeah, one is great, but their one X show 
was unreal how good it was. 1X was one of the best shows that we've had by far this year. Some of the best fights in kickboxing and Muay Thai. Some of the best kick sport stuff we've ever seen. Man, I, I loved 1X. This is one of the best ones. All right, let's start right from the bottom. The winner of the Featherweight Grand Prix, Alizov. Uh, Shingiz Alizov was able to outpoint, outmaneuver, outspeed just everywhere. He was beating him. He defeated City Chai to win the Grand Prix final. Uh, Alizov just had this fight in the bag, really. He looked faster. He was landing better combinations. He was finishing the combinations. He was using like, it, everywhere. He had the advantage. Well, what did you think of this matchup? Man, like my like my NCAA uh, college basketball <laughs> bracket, Chingy Alizar busted my bracket in the in the final. I know, I know, I was know. Way through, and then in the final, it got busted. <laughs> man, like, like I like I said, man, I've been sitting chai all the way through. He proved I know. me right. I would he was just going through everybody, but yo, Chingy Alizar, man, did not care. He was like, hey. I'm here. I want to be the champ. I'm the best. He came out. He put it on Sid Chai, man. Sid Chai kind of he kind of seemed like he he really couldn't get going. And then and yeah. then like then like in the third round, it's kind of when Sid Chai had that urgency, but it was our it was already over by then. He had he had to get a finish. And uh Chingy Alizar was like, nope, not happening, man. I mean, it's like I said, it was a good fight, man. Chingy Alizar, man. Like like I said, I've been really impressed with him through this whole tournament. You know, like you know, I, I I really I really enjoyed his progression. Like I, I feel like I feel like he's gotten better. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but yeah, man. I mean, City Child have to wait. Who uh, have to wait for that title shot? But man, Chingy Alizar, man, he 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 definitely did his thing. Jeez, his weight class is so good in one championship right now, too. But Chingy Zalazov, he rose to the occasion when he most needed to rise to the occasion. Like, he took a couple of losses here and there to good fighters. But when he needed to be in the zone and be fighting perfectly, it carried him to the finals of this tournament and won the entire tournament. He's a former K1 champion. He's now a one kickboxing featherweight Grand Prix champion. Just absolute banger. Just an awesome, exciting fighter to watch. Also on this card, we had Nongo defeat Felipe Lobo. A great Muay Thai fight. The Nanga was able to defend his title, uh, getting that thunderous. I mean, he is just like he's he's like a s- spider watching you. He just like figures out your patterns. Like I, I know everyone always says it, and, and sometimes it's true. It's like he's watching you. He's downloading your data. He's processing it, and he's using your counter jab to a thunderous uppercut to end the fight. No second knockdown needed. Standing like he couldn't. Lobo couldn't stand up after the ten count. Nongo put on a a great performance. What do you think of the Nongo fight against Felipe and Lobo? Yeah, man. I was gonna say. I mean, this fight went exactly how we said it was gonna be, man. We said yeah. we said it was gonna be and still. Like to me, man, did Lobo did Lobo ever, ever really get anything off? Like I felt like he was waiting and Nongo Nongo <laughs> to me to Nongo to me. He he had he had initiated all contact. You know, like everything, like every yeah. like every every exchange he started, or 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 he waited and countered like instantly, like right away. So, so to me, man, it was it was it was his fight to lose, and and he was like, nah, it's gonna be and still, and like I said, that, that that was a beautiful uppercut, and he got the job done. It was a beautiful fight. That is a tactician's dream right there. Uh, now, speaking of tactician's dream, Superbon. This is this fight was ridiculous in terms of a kickboxing masterclass. It was a dream to watch. It was just an absolute joy to watch. Superbon had an arsenal. He was launching artilleries of teep kicks, combination leg kicks, body kicks, head kicks, everything to keep Merritt Gregorian's game from ever getting started. It felt like Merritt didn't have a moment in this fight to even get to the step A of what his game plan is. And he's, he's walking people down. You know, he, he's always walking through kicks and stuff like that, just trying to get to striking exchanges. Superbon keeps proving that since he changed camps, I think in like 2018 or something like that, he is a world-class fighter. He is probably pound. He is easily right now, pound for pound, one the greatest fighter in the history of kickboxing. He is kind of putting himself up there now. He's starting to really carve a name himself in history. Uh, and he beat Merrick Gregorian. He avenged that 30-second knockout loss. This was a dream fight. What did you think of it? Hey, man, like you said, beautiful masterpiece by Superbond. Like I said, I mean, hey, I had picked Marat because I just went off their last fight, and I just and I kind of just really thought that Marat would still be able to kind of go forward. Because to me, man, right now, the only person that was beating that was beating Marat was Sidichai. But hey, man, Superbond yeah. came out, proved me wrong. Like I said, like, like you said, Marat never got going because I think I think Superbond realized Marat you know, he comes forward, he's going to, he's going to try to get into a gear, you know, he's yep. going to try to get on gear one, two, and three right away, but Superbond didn't let that happen. Instead, Superbond came out 
and and he went to gear one, two, and three right away. So, like I said, man, you know, changing camps helped him out. Hey, man, he's been he he's been through a killer's row. Like I said, yo, he beat my boy Sidichai. He's beating yep. a, a Petrosian. Now he's beating Marat. Hey, man, that's three that's three killers right there, and he went through <sighs> all of them. Got the dubs. Yep. Hey, man, like, like like you said, like I think um uh, I think I think our guys uh beyond kick they have him as as uh the number one uh you know pound for pound of uh, kickboxer right now. I'm pretty I'm pretty I'm pretty sure when um. Uh, combat press comes out he'll be number one as well on their on, on their on their lightweight division so mm-hmm. i mean hey man he's doing the thing right now he is the top guy i can't yeah. wait to see him uh versus uh chingy alizar man that that should be a banger as well because like you said you know that you, you you know you know that alizar just comes straight ahead too as well i mean i mean he goes he goes from goes from gear one to gear two right away so i mean mm-hmm. it should be it should be action-packed i can't i can't i, I can't i can't wait to when they announce that one I, man, I'm pumped for this. This is setting up this 2022 for kickboxing, this 2022 for one championship, and the 2022 for Super Bond are all going to be golden capital title years where we look back and just go like, wow, that was stuff was so good. Everything, the way it was built up was awesome. But yeah, now we get Shingiz Alice off versus Super Bond. And this match, unlike a lot of kickboxing matches, they haven't fought before. So it'll be a lot of fun to see how Super Bond beats the hell out of that guy's body. Like, that's <laughs> all I can really say. <laughs> you know what? I will say, I think especially watching both of their fights back to back at one act. Like I was just rewatching it a, a few minutes ago. Um, I think Alazov will do better than Marek Gregorian will have done. Cause I think he's thinking a little bit more tactically. He's making better adjustments because the way he shut, shut down city shot is, is hard to do. He wasn't outpowering him or anything like that. He was out tacticianing him. And, yeah. and so I think he's going to do a little bit better against super bond than most of these guys have in the last little while. Right. Yeah. And plus two, I want to say, uh, I want to say, isn't Chingy Alizar the uh, taller guy? He probably has the reach as well, you know. Ooh. So you know, he can he can he might keep him away with his jab, his t- kicks as well. So like I said, it should it should it should be. I mean, ba- ba- basically, man, you see that one? That's a banger alert right there. <laughs> that is a banger alert. Yeah, you're right too. Uh, he's um Superbon is uh, sparring with Buaka today. Imagine your sparring partner being Baokao. It's like, oh my god, this guy is just insane how good he is. But yeah, huge shout out to Beyond Kickboxing for kind of do- contributing a massive amount to this sport. Beyond Kickboxing has been absolutely awesome. Major supporters of us. Uh, so we absolutely love Beyond Kickboxing, even though they don't have Masaki Nori on their pound for pound list. Which exactly, is- man, which I don't understand, but we'll get into that. Man, what the fuck is that? Those, man, clowns, man, they're Beyond Kickboxing. Obviously the best. Talk to you guys every day. So Super Bond, and we also had Fight of the Year. I'm locking it in. This is it's only March now, but we know this is Fight of the Year. Hiroki Akimoto versus Capitan. Hiroki Akimoto. Just Hiroki Akimoto. Just absolutely insane. How this fight was amazing. So we had one guy, he's uh, he's a, I, I, it's hard to really voice what I'm trying to say, but he's got a Kyokushin karate background mm-hmm. and he's adjusted really well into like a very strong karate boxer. He's throwing huge combinations. In, he's making sure he's the last one landing in each combination. Um, and he was also really abusing Kapitan's uh, habit of clinching, which obviously in Muay Thai, not a big deal in kickboxing. You can't do. And he was able to really land a lot of knees up close in the body over and over again as a defensive thing. Uh, making sure that he was landing first and landing last. And then Capitan just kind of kept pouring it on him. But Akimoto wasn't responding by defensively. He was throwing back. So we ended up just getting two volumetric strikers throwing back. This was an insane fight. This is fight of the year. Easy. Lock it in. What do you think, Brandon? Yeah, man. This is this is that well, this is what the other like because I think I want to say I only got like two kickboxing fights correct on this card. So this is the <laughs> other one that I that I predicted correctly. Nice. Um, man, like you said, like I like I mean in the first in the first round I was a little worried, uh, you know, because Capitan was on point, man. He was looking sharp, letting wow. everything go. But then, He's like kind of towards the end, I think he got caught, he got rocked, and then that's when and that and that and, that, and that's when, and that's when I think the, the the confidence went up, and then yeah. and then that's when and that and then and that's when he kind he kind of he he started, he started bring he started bringing it to him. Also, too, I want to say unlike um unlike in the uh in the in the other title fight. Um, I can't remember his name. Uh, who did who who did the who did the uh, Nango go Nango? against? Yeah, Felipe Lobo. Uh, yeah, Lobo. To me, Lobo gave too much too much respect to Nango. Like 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 I said, he really wasn't throwing anything. He was always waiting, let and, and letting Nango start. But here with, with the Capitan fight, 
Um, what's his name? He was he wasn't giving Capitan the respect. He was really going after, like like you said, like I said, even though even though Capitan was throwing something, he was throwing something right back. And to me, to me, he always seemed like he was going after his leg as well. He always trying to make sure the end on a on 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 a, on, a, on a low kick, and, that, and that's what he was doing every single time. After every exchange, it didn't really matter what it was. He was always just bringing it. So. I mean, like I said, I, I, like I said, I think, I think, I think that's what won him the fight. Like I said, it was a good fight. It was a like that, and again, that one right there, another banger alert right there, man. That, 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 that was all action packed. That fight was insane. It's free on YouTube now. Anyone can watch it, and it was by far the fight of the year. But there was a few things that you said that I, I absolutely want to touch on. So yeah, showing respect to your opponent you end up getting into the Felipe Lobo trap of respecting your opponent too much. Uh, I, I forget who said it. It was it was one of the more notable boxers, like Roberto Duran or something like that, was like, if you really respect your opponent, hit him as hard as you can in the first 10 seconds of the fight because you need to get over that. You need to get yep. over that, like, respecting being scared of my opponent because you're going to end up being a little bit cautious the whole fight. Akimoto did the right thing of, like, I respect this guy, so I'm going to hit him as hard as I can. I think often we get into, like, what did he do tactically, strategically? What did he do? But we always forget that wearing down, even at this level, power does make a massive difference. And I think, like you said, that right kick that he's been training since eight years old, that right kick was wearing down uh, Capitan. Because at a few points, Capitan was tripping on that kick. And even on his, uh, I think, Instagram, he was like, man, that guy's right kick was so yeah. much harder than I thought it was. So I think in the first round, they were a little bit close, but that right kick, it was like in a video game and that energy meter is slowly being drained every time it landed and it kept landing over and over again. Yeah. Absolutely love this fight, eh? Yeah, man, it was a good fight. Like like you said, like as of right now, that probably uh, could be, uh, like you said, fight of the year right there. Oh, amazing stuff. Anything else you want to throw on? Oh, we also had uh, the the one X uh, Demetrius Johnson versus Rod Tang fight. I mean, I, I think, the, nothing super surprising other than Rod Tang, I think, was that. Sorry, not Rod Tang. Demetrius Johnson was a little bit better in the Muay Thai round than I expected him to be. Is that fair to say? Yeah. I mean, like, I knew that DJ would be able to survive that round. You know, it's like, like, say, like, like, say, it's not like he's going to run around, you know, yeah. like saying Rod Tang, like, say, like, to me, I didn't think, I think Rod Tang was going to come out guns blazing anyway, because usually, like, Rod Tang, he kind of, he kind of likes to get it going anyway. And, in the uh in the second and third round but hey second round was mma he got taken yeah. down he got choked out so you know it is it is what it is uh the only thing i was gonna say man uh on this card man just hey shout out to john wayne parr you know hell of a yeah. career you know if this really was his final fight you never know in combat uh uh retirements they they will say that they're retired the next you know two weeks later the, you know they're fighting again but not but 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 in reality though but like i said shout out to him hell of a career yeah. uh you know Kind of bad that, that 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 he really that he really didn't make it to the big to to the big show until until to the later parts of his career. But that's how it is in kickboxing, you know, man. It's always all over the place, you know. Um, and then man, yeah. Nikki Holskin, man, Nikki Holskin, man, took a oh, shot, man. Took down, you know. <laughs> no second ten count needed, eh? Yeah. How was that? Hey. hey, man, four rounds gloves, man. They will make a difference, you know. Like I said, man, like like we said, man, all all the more tight fights. And one, they, they they rocked the four rounds gloves. You know, yeah. you know, like I said, I thought I thought Nikki still had the advantage because, like I said, you know, he has all the kickboxing um, uh, experience, and also too, you know, he does have boxing experience as well. So I kind of I kind of really thought he would would have took it to him. Hey, man, first round was a good round. I probably, I really I probably would give that round to Nikki Holskin, but then hey, the second round came, and then boom, he got caught, and it was over. But hey, man, I'm sure I'm sure he'll be back. Um, and that's really it, man. Other than that, like I said, man, one X was was a pretty good card, man. Like I said, they they had they had bangers scattered all you know all over, you know, in the first prelim, the second prelim, and and, and on the pay per view. Man, I, I want to throw in with John Way Parr for one sec because we throw the term around legend almost too much in combat sports. There's only like four words we use in combat sports, and legend is we repeat yep. it all the time. Yep. But John Wayne Parr has absolutely earned that position as legend. He was fighting in a sport where, like, he he was never technically sound. He never like everything about it was working against him. And this guy just loved it time in time out. He got damaged. He got hurt. He would win. Doesn't matter. He was absolutely loving it. What's funny is we were talking about, this is maybe trying to get his a hundredth win mm -hmm. uh, a documentary about, I think it was the 2005 K1 Max Grand Prix, the one with like John Wayne Parr was in it. Mike Zambides was in it. Uh, Buakau was in it. Andy Sauer was in it. So that documentary, they were interviewing a young John Wayne Parr in 2005. And John Wayne was like, man, this might be my last year. I'm getting old at this point. And now it's 2022. He's still here. Yeah. And we're like, man, he's probably not retired. <laughs> yeah. Damn, man, you like, never know, man. And he's a legend of the sport. Uh, but yeah, 
uh, we will see what uh, Cynthia Mutt. Neither, no one knew who. Like, I, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. We we're in the sport. No one knew who this gentleman was. He's making his debut in one, uh, knocking out Nikki Holskin. That was awesome. Nikki Holskin's looking for a rematch, but we got to move forward. Infusion 105. There was a couple of really nice notes that I wanted to talk about on this one. Infusion always puts on a good show. It's always available for free on YouTube. Uh, a couple of people that you need to keep your eye on for the future. Undefeated Daryl Verdonk scored a first round knockout and undefeated Brandon Foss won a decision. Both of these were at lightweights. Uh, and the main and co-main event, you had heavyweight Sam Tevet versus Nadal Bachiri. Nadal won a decision despite not having a reach advantage. Nadal, I think, was um, uh, he was a higher weight, but he was faster. He, did, he just looked better. You, did you catch this fight? What did you think of it? Oh yeah, no, I I did. I like I I watched I watched the whole thing from 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 even their 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 nice. uh, talent show in the beginning. But no, man, like I said, it was a good card. Like I said, like I said, I've been a, I've been a big fan of Infusion. Yep. Like I said, Infusion, like oh man, like I want to say I've been in, I've been on the Fusion train since like I don't know, like. 2010 2011 yep. something like that you know since but, the reality show which we talked about yeah, on air exactly. and i've never heard of that <laughs> exactly man like that's how i found out about who uh denise keyholtz is and everything like that man but not nah, but infusion to me man always puts on good shows good production uh just bangers you know, just bangers on bangers of fights man like i said i really i really like that uh brandon uh fios fight uh like brandon fios really looked good you know um i i think he did get rocked in the first round but but i believe i believe he came back Got you know, got the W. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, one man, to keep like, your eye on. Keep your eye on that one. He's one to keep your eye on. Yeah, man. Yeah, exactly, man. Like I said, it was just it was just a good fight, good card overall, man. Dude, the main event, the main event. I'm kind of shocked on why it happened because it's like one. They the... just fought. Like I think this was a <laughs> this was a uh, this was an infusion 105. I think they yeah. fought at like infusion. I think it was 100 or 101. Like they just fought, and and to me, and to me, like there was no controversy in the in the in the in the win or anything. And to me, it's like the same thing just happened. Like homeboy just had two fights, took two L's. You know, uh, it was it was like it was like why, why like like no need like you know no need for this fight. But hey, man, yeah. I, was still, I, was still, I was still in I was still entertained. You know, another another uh um. Moroccan bringing it. You know, man, yep. dude, like yeah, man, dude, the the Moroccan crowds, man, they just be coming. That's right. Yeah. Main event, uh, Muhammad Toshasi wins by second round, uh, second round TKO, just like a, a left hook. Like you swing a baseball bat. Like he started behind him. Like, man, that was a massive left hook he had here. No second knockdown needed. Uh, but yeah, Bilal, but I'm sorry. I'm the French, the French accent is the hardest one, but we got Bilal Bukashi Sharouf and, uh, he improves to like, Oh, and two in infusion. So yeah, I, like you said, this was a little bit of a weird matchmaking hiccup here, but uh, yeah, Bilal did have moments in the fight as well. In the first round, I think he was putting it on him towards the end of the round. But overall, I, I like my notes were like, Tushasi looks just ahead here. He looks tactically smarter. He looks like he's one step ahead. He looks faster. He's throwing better combinations. Overall, Mohamed Tushasi in the main event of Fusion 105, probably one to keep your eye on for the future, right? Yeah, man. I mean, I mean, I want, I want to say, but I want to say, but what they got going on with Glory, man, you can see that dude at, at a at a Glory event soon. You know, like I don't like to me, I feel like saying like Infusion is kind of like. Like I want, like I, I guess, like I really never want to say, like, oh, infusion or infusion, is like the B League, like the one underneath Glory, but the way how it kind of seems like it could be, because it, because it seems like a lot of their fighters from Infusion are going to Glory. So to me, it's like that's kind of like their partnership is kind of good. Like maybe you give these guys a little bit of shine, you know, being, you know, being on the Glory card uh, or Glory Rivals card, and next thing you know, they're they're in Glory now. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, it's it's like it's I want to say yes and no to that because. Like, like you said, it's definitely not a B League, but it yeah. acts like it's a B League. It's not a B League. Infusion isn't a B League. Look at Glory 80. More mm -hmm. than 50% of those fighters are Infusion fighters. Like, yep. most of the really good fighters in Glory came from Infusion. And yes, they're a feeder league and stuff like that. But at what point are we just saying, like, yeah, Infusion is the main league that where the guys get paid more in Glory. And everything that Glory has scheduled for the next little while is a Glory's rivals with Infusion. Like, yeah. At what point are we just like that? Infusion is the main thing. Infusion is what yeah. you guys got to watch. Like it's uh, most of yeah. Glory's really good stuff is Infusion. Yeah, I mean, I mean, hey, I mean, I want to say, I want to say, because of Infusion is the reason why I found out the uh, date for uh, Glory Rivals too. Because I didn't even know, I, I, I didn't yeah. even know that that date was already out. But then, boom, you're watching Infusion, and then, boom, and they're giving you shows after shows, like they're telling you when their next shows are. Yeah. You know? <laughs> So I wish I wish Glory was doing that, but hey, at least at least Infusion is 
and then like I said, and you say, but, but the thing I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of intrigued about Glory Rivals too because yeah. of where the location is, and it's just like that. That's where I'm wondering because that's going to be in the Netherlands. I and wondered remember, that too. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Remember, Go on. Remember how Glory had their whole deal about how they didn't want to do shows in the Netherlands because of that athletic commission, and everything like that, and that's why Glory Eighty was in Belgium. Yeah. So like Glory Rivals one is in Belgium, but Glory Two is scheduled to be in the Netherlands. So I'm kind of I'm kind of I'm kind of intrigued by that. I wondered that as well. I wonder if the, uh, maybe it's something because the Dutch government went to Glory and said you need to start testing properly in terms of like athletic conditions. I wonder if they can promote Rivals as like okay, so everyone who competes in Glory Rivals can be tested under their program. Everyone who's a Glory fighter can still be tested under our original program or something like that. It's just a way of like skirting conditions in some way. But yeah, I'm not really sure because it's going to be a bunch of like Jos van Belsen is currently scheduled for it, who's definitely a Glory fighter. So yeah, I don't entirely know what that's going to look like in terms of what the discussion was, but honestly, if the government says you need to start drug testing your athletes, just like wave that as a green flag kind of thing of like that is like the UFC did once they introduced USADA they were that is like the crowning jewel of one of, of, of their organization we're on Fox and we test our athletes properly just make it part of the make it part of like your package of how you're presenting your product right yeah well because because to me I felt like the whole deal was that I think mm -hmm. Glory like say like the thing was like Glory already had a company that that they used yeah. you know so for instance it's like I guess I guess really how you want to be like if you really did break it down to like the athletic commissions, it's like it's like how I think like in like like glory like 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 the UFC has has USADA that's who they use yeah. but use like athletic commissions or like boxing you could have like WADA you know which is like yeah. the world anti doping you know so you got USADA and WADA or or even or or, or even or anything Vegas even has their own called VADA I think Vegas you know anti because I remember because I because because I remember when GSP. And I think it was Johnny Hendricks were fighting. Yeah. They had a, they had a scuffle about that because I think like Johnny Hendricks he wanted to use Vada, and I think GSP wanted to use Wada. Wada, like that. yeah, that's so, what it was too. So, so like to me, I feel like this is the same thing here with Glory. It's like Glory, Glory, Glory is like, oh, we already have a company that does our drug testing for us, but you want us to use this other company. We don't really want to let go of these people because, again, like I think they say, like, oh, we have to terminate this relationship that we have. So you're basically yeah. firing this company so you yeah. can do this. And like, I think that's what I think that's what Glory didn't want to do. But it's like, well, you're doing a show in Bel I mean, in the Netherlands come June. So I don't know what I don't know what what's going on. So that's, I don't what, know. that's why I'm kind of intrigued by it. I agree. I agree. We'll see what their what like what was agreed in the back room or what how they kind of got around this or they're just embracing it. I would always recommend just embrace it. Better testing stuff like that is not bad for the sport in any way. Nope. Uh, we also have a scoop. Uh, I don't know if anyone else is reporting it because I don't know. No one really cares. But <laughs> so Glory Rivals, I think three is going to be in Japan with Ryzen, and I believe they also they told me July. Uh, oh, I, did not I know don't... that. Hey man, breaking news! Breaking news, baby! I did not know that one. I think that is actually breaking news because Glory PR is just like, man, here's the news. Can you write about it? And I'm like, I'm so busy. I don't have time. Sorry. I don't need, I can't even break scoops anymore, but yeah. So I think it's supposed to be in Japan in July. Um, and that'll be with rise. What the exact matchups will be. We don't know, but yeah, that's going to be a fun one. Man, uh, that's, I mean, I mean, for, I mean, if you think about it for glory, that's three straight events because glory yep. one is in May. Glory yep. two is in June. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm glory rivals. Three is going to yep. be in July. That's, yep. I mean, that's pretty good. You're going to get, you're going to get, you know, fights right there, hopefully, you know, speaking, and we'll get some bigger names. And speaking of, we kind of glossed over it because it's been happening for so long, but we have a, a date for uh, Tension Takuru here. Give me one second. I, I have it here. Unless you have it off the top of your head. I believe it was June 19th. I think you are. Absolutely. Said. And they said, yeah, June 19th at the Tokyo. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't sure because, of course, when they announced it here in America, it was April Fool's. Or it was I know. April 1st, so. So like a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know. This is April. This is April Fool's joke. So I was I just like, I'll just let it be and just see what happens. It might as well be like everyone's still like, I don't know. Only one side actually announced it. The other side hasn't agreed, like hasn't confirmed that this is true. But they, either way, someone has booked the Tokyo Dome. I think it's um, Ryzen has announced that this is confirmed, that it's supposed to be Tension versus Takaru. How much else is agreed to? We'll, we'll wait and see. But yeah, this is big for kickboxing. Hopefully they can keep the sport growing. A rising ship 
raises all or sorry a rising tide raises all yep. ships so this is very fun and we'll talk about that one as we get a little bit closer we also had this weekend uh let's jump down to rise had a couple of really capital fights rise is one of the best promotions like this is, stuff is absolutely awesome they had so many good fights on the card up and down but rise from japan is absolutely awesome uh let's get the main event out of the way because mm, who cares tension looked fine the reason that tension looked fine is because everyone around tension and what you've heard about him for years has been like this guy is one of the greats this guy is one of the all-time greats he's an amazing kickboxer and if you watch his highlight reel yes that is absolutely true but the problem is that someone keeps feeding you food that they're telling you is the greatest food in history and it's just okay every time you watch it like is this fair to say of just like you're it's, it's almost like you're let down from watching him fight and he won he won fairly squarely but like just kind of feel let down i mean he did win but was it not a close fight like was it in like was it not a split decision yeah. Yeah, it was, it was exact decision. It was a majority I mean, decision. So one oh, person was right. yeah. I mean, I mean, well, like you guys remember too, like one, the guy that we did fought, I think, was a teammate of his. So I mean, it he was. knew him pretty well. You know, he kind of knows his tendencies if they're if they're sparring all the time together. Uh yeah. so I mean that could have made it the reason why it was a close fight. Fair. Um I mean, also too though, like I don't know, man. Like, I mean, I have as I told you, man, like. I I have my reasons for when that for when when when, for when that tension uh, to core fight happens, man. I already know I already know who I'm picking. I know why. Uh, yeah, but, but it's like, man, it's like it's like I get it, man. Like, no, like tension has been looking good, but lately though, man, he kind of really hasn't been looking so good. I you know? know? Yeah, I do. I bet I'm on that train. Like he. Uh, man, we don't want to bury the lead for like future shows too much, but like that boxing matches that he have, he doesn't look that good, and he's not boxing really good fighters, and that's all he's done for like two years now is box retired MMA fighters, and he just looks just okay doing it, right? Yeah. But yo, attention, shout out if you want to come beat me up for money in an exhibition boxing match, dude, I am game for that. We also had Yaman got a KO after getting knocked down. This was a back and forth fight. Yaman's been hugely impressive. He's only twenty five years old, he's making an impressive name for himself. This makes it five wins. In in a row and that's just 2021 and 2022 really impressive round one victory this past weekend did you, did you catch the yaman fight there hey man dude finisher out there man like i say he yeah. came in put in work did his thing man like like you said man dude dude just it's it's just it's just beautiful violence man that's what i'm here to see i'm here to see beautiful <laughs> violence that's what that's what I'm seeing here, man. Beautiful violence over here. <laughs> no, absolutely awesome. That is a great event. We also had Masaki. No, oh no, that was at the K1 event. Anything that's else true. at the Rise event that we needed to cover off, or was it just those two fights? Uh, I mean, those. I mean, to to me, man, every everything was good. <laughs> every everything was yeah. good. Guys, I mean, you know, another another long another long event. You know, starting at like one a.m. over here, and then whatever. But it was it was still good, man. I I I was enjoying, man. It's always good stuff. Rise, yeah, it might put on the best kickboxing in Japan. K1 definitely has the name value, so they get away with a lot more. But Rise consistently brings it. Rise is consistently an amazing, awesome show. Really, absolutely love Rise. And why Glory's partnered up with them. There you go. That's the reason. Yeah, they have really good fighters, really talented fighters, man. It's awesome stuff. So we also had K1, K-Festa, a couple big things going on. Let's start with what we always want to talk about. The only thing we really want to talk about, Masaki Nori, just a tactician, gets a first round knockout, continuing the knockout streak. He's too good. He's too technical. Only one loss since 2018 with 13 wins in that same times. Nine of those wins were, are by way of knockout. This guy, come on. No, like he's he's good, man. Like again, man. I remember when this dude was fighting at not even not even nineteen. Like this dude was still in high school, beating beating people up. You know, yeah. like that's like like that's how long I've been I've I've been I've been on the Nori train, man. Yep. You know, when he was eighteen in high school and stuff like that. You know, just just having big fights. And man, like ever since then, like now, man, like saying you know he's bigger, stronger, dude. He's putting in work now, man. Just I like to say every fight lately, man, it's just a finish. And bro, and he's knocking dudes out like he's not like i mean like i mean it's not it's, it's not like tkos these are knocked out man it's like yo get the smelling sauce wake this dude up please that it was absolutely awesome i mean he's he's a welterweight champion just absolutely love to see the progress in nisaki nori and where he's going next but yeah this he's an awesome fighter there's a reason that he was your fighter of the year last year like we put him alongside names of like rico verhoeven he deserves that position he deserves to be up there with super bond and guys like that he is he is that good uh so absolutely love him whatever beyond Kick, don't listen to beyond kickboxing we're your only kickboxing. <laughs> put him in your top 10, all right? I'm telling you. Put him in the top 10. He belongs there. You still got 
still got Artem Bahi topping, and that dude hasn't fought like forever. All right. <laughs> Man, now back into... <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. <laughs> uh, we also had Tetsuya Yakamoto and he- Hadihiki. Heidi, man, I can always read it just fine and I can hear it in my head. It's a matter of saying it. And Yamazaki. Yamazaki won the super lightweight title in 2020, undefeated since 2018. Tetsuya Yamamoto is a bit more damaged despite being younger. He has way more fights. A uh, high point of his career was in 2010 when he won a K1 Max Grand Prix. And since 2018, he's taken on five losses and just three wins in that time. But now... It's like an old man coming back. Amazingly, he's won first via first round knockout in the first minute to steal a super lightweight title. This is just like watching an old, I don't know, just like your old older brother winning a title after losing a bunch. This was an unexpected victory here. And now he's a super lightweight title. What'd you think of this knockout? I mean, shocking is one of the words to use, you know, or, uh, you know, upset, man. It was, it was just, it was crazy, but. Hey man, this is why you watch the sport, man, for 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 crazy things like this, man. But it was it was a good fight. Like I said, it started out. I mean, dudes, dudes were just going at it, man. Like I said, he he was he was like, hey man, title shot, you know, it's on the line. This could be, you know, this could this could be my last chance at glory. And boom, he yeah. went for it, man. Like I said, you know, he dared to be great and he got to be great. <sighs> And dare to be great. Man, that's absolutely true. That was absolutely awesome. This is just this sport sometimes. This sport is so good. I don't I don't understand how we're like the only guys out here, but like this sport is so fucking cool. <laughs> it is, man. That's what that's why that's why we do this, man. That's why we do this, man. We're trying to spread the love to the people. Man, and he cried after he won. He celebrated with the corner. It's amazing to see. But we also had Ma- Mahmoud Satari winning the open weight K1, uh winning the open one. The oh we had my food yeah, open, yeah, open, <laughs> open weight grand prix he was an iranian born fighter improved 103 wins only 10 losses in his career he's finding success a little bit later in his career three wins two knockouts in one night the only decision was against the last of the golden age kickboxers kiyotaro and i was like, kind of laughing before it because i was like man i didn't know kiyotaro was even still fighting uh but now so satari is a crush champion and a 2022 k1 open weight grand prix champion what do you think of this guy? What do you think of Kyotaro still fighting? Uh, <laughs> what? It was it was good, man, dude. Like Satari man went out, did his thing, man, dude. He was dropping bombs on everybody he was fighting, man. Like he yeah. was bringing the heat. Like 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 my man Zach Zach Mukasa. I always remember bombs and drama, baby. Bombs yeah. and drama. <laughs> That's what he was bringing that night, dude. Like I said, man, he was coming out, knocking dudes out, putting people yeah. out. You know, I'm saying, he, and and it was just it was just good, man. Like. Like same dude, this is like sometimes like this is why this is why you, this is why you like those those one night tournaments because you get to see stuff like this instead of kind of breaking it up. But hey, man, I I mean I was cool with it, man. Like say it, it was good stuff. Just just chef's kiss, baby. Chef's kiss, man. One night tournaments they create these interesting, cool storylines, which is just a ton of fun. And, and I think he's the only. It's a weird thing. I want to say he's the only foreign-born person in this tournament and ended up winning. Everyone else was Japanese. Officially, Saitoshi Ishii is of Croatian descent. Um, but we we know that's not really the case. <laughs> like, but yeah, so it's Saitoshi Ishii, the former judo gold medalist, spent some time in MMA, um, and now he switched to kickboxing full-time, training under Mirko Krokop. Uh, won the first round of this tournament and then dropped out due to taking a rib injury in during the fight. So puts himself, honestly, in the best position. He didn't lose in the tournament, dropped out due to injury, but now likely you're going to see him fight Satari next. But yeah, Saitoshi Ishii dropping out despite being the biggest name in the tournament here. Uh, and Kyotaro, of course. Can't forget Kyotaro. But yeah, what do you think of these two old guys? What do you do with Ishii? What do you do with Kyotaro? I can't believe he's still fighting, man. Hey, man. They're na- they, I mean, it's like we talk about, man. Like, you're like a John Wayne Parr, man. Dude, like, their names, their their names, you know. So, like, people people, people in Japan are going to know who they are. You know True. I mean? Hey, and like I said, man, dude, if, if people are willing to pay them, you know, and if their bodies are still good to go and they still got the passion for it, why not, you know, let, you, let, 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 let them keep going? Man, is there something with judo gold medalists and switching into MMA? Like, um, oh man, I always forget the gentleman's name, but the other judo gold medalist who was, oh, Yoshida, Yoshida, like these guys just taking fights that they don't need to take way later in their career, well past their prime and just down to bang. Like Yoshida was fighting Mirko Krokop. He was fighting Vanderlei Silva, even Yoel Romero, another judo medalist, uh, just like ready to bang. We got Saitoshi Ishii over here being like, yeah, judo was fun. I had a good time. I want to fuck, want to bang. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I mean, hey man, you, like like they say, man, you just people, man, they 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 love they love throwing those hands, you know, letting those hands go. Well, it's too man, I say, yo, yeah. these guys are getting paid well, very well, you know what I'm saying? Like, especially to remember, like other countries, they they kind of treat their gold medalists a lot better than say they kind of do, I guess, you know, in like the US over there, because you know, they 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 pay them very well. Like, I mean, that's the that's the story that you hear. So I mean like, so, so, so I'm saying so these guys are probably getting majorly paid, you know, to to do these fights. It's like, hey, yeah. why not? You know, that's actually a good point too. Yeah, I think it's a much more prestigious win for a lot of countries. Whereas, like Canada, like we got so many gold medals in in, in winter Olympics that I don't I don't know any of those people. Yeah. <laughs> There's just too many. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's a little bit less prestigious winning in Canada or sometimes US. But yes, Itoshi Ishii. We'll see what the future holds for him. Um, we had so that was the K1 event. Oh man, we wrapped it up. We are working efficiently today. Usually we're just wasting time, but man, we are. This is a busy couple of weeks, and we're just like doing well here. So upcoming, anything else we need to cover off on the K one K Festa card? Nah, man. Uh, I mean, I was gonna say, uh, well, I just didn't make sure I find my notes because I'm like, we did go over that. Um, just <laughs> the uh, the um, I want to say it was the no. Nah, well, we talked about Muhammad Satari, right? Yeah, we talked about Muhammad. We Satari. did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, he was good. Oh no, uh, it was um, uh, 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 Suzuki uh, uh, Hayato. Yeah. He he was good. He was good as well. I just want to just touch upon man. Like he he looked real good, man. You know, because because he fought because he fought a former lightweight champion. So I mean, he he looked sharp. That he should, he looked sharp as well on, on on his fight. Yeah, it's not an easy fight to win, but yeah, looking sharp. So yeah, they, K1, K Festa, and Rise both were exceptional nights. But yeah, that, there was a lot of fights that we had to skip over just trying to like we got to. How do you tell the story of these two nights? Because if you sit and watch the entire event, I think it's like. It's like eight hours long. One X, another really long one. Yep. I think it was eleven. Yeah, it started, hours. started out. It started out. It was like one a.m., five a.m., eight a.m. My time. That is man. It's just insane. I, I thought I was. Yeah, I, I won't complain about anything. But <laughs> it's getting paid, so whatever. <laughs> so upcoming the big kickboxing events. We look forward. Like uh, we finished it all in the last two weeks. So the the upcoming event is one reloaded, uh, in which they have their lightweight champion chip on the line with Regian Ursel going to be fighting Arian Sadakovic. Uh, Sadakovic, he was one and one in glory, leaving on a win, and then he left for one, beat Mustaf Haida, uh, and now faces Regian Ursel for the lightweight kickboxing title. Ursel is he's on an 18 fight win streak, and he's the one champion. He is an incredible talent. Most of those were and of those 18 wins, he was either defending his Lion Fights title or he was defending his one championship title. In this matchup, I really do want to cheer for an underdog, but I have trouble painting the picture in any honest way where Ursel doesn't win. Am I, I'm not insane for saying that. Nah, man. Uh, to me, yeah. this 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 Ursel win, man, like, he's going to be and still. Uh, yeah. like, dude is good, man. Like, I don't really see anybody in their, in their division, give, you know, giving them trouble, you know, in that weight class right now. Um, I mean, you would, you know, you would, you would say Nikki Holskin, but hey, you just saw his last fight, but <laughs> you know, is it is just like, hey, you just never know if they really like to me, like one, like in certain weight classes, they have the talent. In certain weight classes, they yeah. don't have the talent. Yeah, I think it's just one of those things where here it's just like in this one, they don't really have that many guys yet, or at least, or at least I should say, guys we don't know of yet, because you never know, they could have somebody there that's putting in work, we just don't see them yet. No, that that's absolutely true. Of like, uh, some 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 of their classes are much better than others. Like their featherweight are uh, just exceptional stuff. Their light heavyweight couldn't be more the opposite, where there's kind of nothing there at all. Uh, but also on this card, the match that I think we've been we've kind of been talking about it for a while because it's clear where our fandom lies. But they're they're doing the inaugural strawweight Muay Thai championship featuring Jackie Bunton versus uh, Smelia Sundell of Sweden. I just uh, setting up this matchup. Absolutely love it. Sundell. I think she's only 17 or 18 years old at this point, over 30 wins in Muay Thai. She's a, she's kind of a Muay Thai phenom. And of those 30 wins, most of them keep in mind, we're talking about women's strawweight with a 16 and 17 year old here. Most of those, over 20 of those were by knockout. She made her debut in one championship in 2021, uh, got a third round TKO in her debut, looked flawless doing it. Jackie Buntan made her debut in one championship in 2021. Now it's on a three fight win streak in that time. And she is a Muay Thai tactician. You can teach Muay Thai from tapes of her fight. We're massive fans of both of these people. I'm so excited for this one more than I ever had any other fight on this card. What do you think of the Buntan uh, Sundell fight? Oh man, I'm here for it, man. You know yeah. me, man. I always enjoy watching the ladies throw down. Uh, Jackie Bhutan, like I said, we are we are a fan of hers. So you yeah. kind of already know who 
who we will be rooting for or picking. Uh, you know, yeah. the time comes. Uh, but yeah, man. I mean, hey, man, it should, it should, it should be it should be a good one. You know, it should be a good one. Two uh, title fights, you know, on this card, uh, and it should be should be two good ones. Like especially two, like I said, with the with the with the champion on the men's side have having a good performance, and and like I said, our girl uh, uh, Jackie Poot, uh, Boonton, is, uh, you know, her having a, a, another uh, spectacular performance as well. Yeah, I'm a major fan. Like you always have to show your biases up front when you're doing kind of predictive stuff. But yeah, Boonton, all roads lead to Jackie Boonton. She just looks too technical. She looks too smooth out there. Uh, I think Smelia Sundell of Sweden does have a really good chance in this fight. She is a knockout queen. She wears people down round over round. This is a cool fight. This is going to be a lot of fun. So for the inaugural one championship Muay Thai title, Matt, we uh, we we put a bow on it. Like that was good. That was an efficient hour there. What else do we have upcoming? We got a little crush show. We got a smaller rye show. Uh, there's an infusion show April 30th, but we're going to be back before then. There's a oh, crush. Show. Um- Oh yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, well, I was gonna say no. I was gonna say the yeah. next infusion show. I thought was the May, was the May fourteenth card. I think it's May fourteenth. They're having a, a band a bantamweight uh, tournament. Uh, oh, kind of champion. So let's take a look. Let's actually take a look at the infusion schedule then. Infusion schedule. Cause that's because that, because 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 on the last show, that's what that that that's what they were saying that that the next card was gonna be May fourteenth, and then you, then you got the May twenty first is the uh, Glory Rivals one because they're doing uh, they're doing the bantamweight tournament. Uh, yeah, so we just did that one. Previous upcoming Infusion 106 for the Infusion World title. And that one is on the 14th of May in the, yeah, that's the Netherlands. Yeah, in the Netherlands. So yeah, so 14th of May, 106. What am I seeing here? Oh, it's just my information was incorrect. Okay, that's all it was. That's on me. That's on me, guys. I take responsibility when I mess up, which is a lot. But yeah, Fusion 106 for the Bantamweight Tournament will be the 14th of May. That's going to be a fun one, man. It's going to be a fun one. I don't think I have any note for that one, but definitely tune in and watch it. They always have great events. Yeah, man. Like I said, it should be, like I said, especially with the Bantamweight, you know, saying the lower weight classes, uh, say it should be uh, a banger for for, for, the guy, for the guys that they do have on the on the card. Which and show and we are excited for that one. What else do we have upcoming? Anything else we need to shout out or to be I can't believe we did it. This has been like the busiest two weeks here. We actually got notes. We had everything ready. Yeah, man. I, like I said, like I said, we got same really coming up. Like I said, we just got the, the the. I mean, I'm hoping to hear back from Glory about that studio show that that they said they were going to do. They because remember, I got the email. Yeah. I was one of the people that I, that had ordered the pay per view. Uh, yep. you know, so, so, so so like I said, they were going to do a studio a studio show coming soon, but. Then I think I just found out. Um, I think it might have been my guy Chris Decker. You know, shout outs to him as well. You know, he he he, he always does a uh, real good uh, posting uh, posting news about about kickboxing. Um, but yeah, about 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 the show maybe not really happening anytime soon. And if they do, they might not really have any like big names on it because I think they're saving them for like the glory numbers. And I don't I don't know. It was just it was just weird stuff going down. No, that's fair. And let me explain because every. It, man, and we felt this way for so long and i wish we didn't feel like it but glory feels like we're, they're always making decisions with like one step forward one step straight back again like every decision they make like the studio show is actually a really cool idea why don't you just host the two fights that we missed because that's what the fans want to watch that's what those people had paid for folks like brandon and i you know i flew down and got it for free but still i flew down <laughs> but yeah I, <laughs> but yeah i don't know glory just thinking one step forward one step back man what do they mean, big names? Like they have such a small roster. <laughs> like they only have big names, really. They have a small roster. Yeah, I'm like, man, I wish I like really did understand Dutch a lot better. But I know you follow that guy, Lars Lars Van Van Sos. Right? Yeah, Lars Van Sos. Yeah, because yeah. uh, he because he was on who reported saying like how I guess you know seven days that they would have more information coming about you know the thing that happened in Glory eighty, but. I it. guess, but I guess it turned out to be unfeasible. So the promotion's in a challenging situation. I tried to read the article, but it was I couldn't get to it because I think I think you had to pay to to read it. And I'm like, yeah, sorry, uh, not not going down like that for me. So I really yeah, don't, no, no, I'm not going to pay for a, a newspaper in a foreign language. I bear, I don't pay for newspapers in my own language. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Lars Van Soest is a is a proper news teller. Uh, I'll check the other one. Hey, while everyone's just hanging out, let me check my other informants see if anyone else leaked some stuff i mean i guess i I mean one thing that i will talk about man is with glory rivals one dude the luis tavares situation man now he's fighting somebody else like i don't 
I don't get it, man. It just keeps getting weirder and weirder about who he's fighting, not fighting. Just, but hey, man, that's that's just how it goes sometimes, I guess. Why? And this is such a weird thing. And I agree with you. If this is just a weird situation, we shouldn't be having so much confusion. Uh, like this, just tell us and announce what's going on. What is the yeah. deal? What is going on? Just tell us in plain language what you want to do to go forward. A lot of when you're a public entity, you need to gain trust from people, especially when you're losing trust from fans. And the thing is, you need to gain trust from fans so you can get paid because it's a pay-per-view model now. Just be direct with what your intentions are. Even if you're ripping everyone off, yeah. just say it. That's fine. But say oh. it out loud and say what you're planning to do and then do it. Yeah. And then and then just one more one more news note. Uh, we had talked about it too as well. Uh, about one signing. Uh, um, oh, yeah. That was a good one. Um um muhammad uh butasa i think that's how you yeah. say it. 15 yeah. and 0 you know say man another guy coming from infusion yeah. you, know, <laughs> going, you know you know going going elsewhere you know to to probably get um um uh majorly paid so i mean that's another banger right there coming up you know as well for him man that's the thing of like they act like a feeder league they're not a feeder league they're the main league at this point like everyone wants to sign infusion fighters and good for them they're going overseas to get paid but yeah muhammad batasa uh, a champion in infusion going to one championship just filling out that division even more that division is even better than it was oh I'm so excited uh but yeah he's undefeated one loss 79 wins is muhammad batasa carrying an infusion title around with him as well uh just excited for the future here man this is gonna be sick stuff it's a good year to be into kickboxing and there's only like eight eight of us watching it but it's a really good year for us eight eight fans <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing else to add on that just yeah I'm tired. yeah man that's it man that's it man hey, man leo let's let leo let's just keep sharing let's just keep sharing it man let's say keep spreading the word uh like say like we like i mean like i mean hey we shout him out earlier but like shout out again man shout out to beyond kick man doing everything that they can uh, yeah. And I'll still, I'll still, like I said it earlier, but yo, shout out to Chris Decker, man. Like I said, he always, he always, he always helps me out with the news and notes of what's, of what's going on, uh, you know, in, in the world of kickboxing as well. So, I mean, yeah. yo, these, like saying, these are the people that, hey, man, if you guys, if you guys aren't following them, give them a follow on Twitter. They're on Instagram as well. Say, you want to know what's going on in kickboxing besides, besides following us, follow them as well. Because like I said, they're the ones who kind of, because that's what we're all doing. Yeah. We're all just sharing sharing the things that we know, helping each other out. And we're just putting, we're, we're, we're just putting it out there. So like I said, man, like, like I keep telling you guys, man, spread the word, jump on us in the comments. If you know, if you know some things that maybe we don't know about, you, you, you know, like, yep. you know, you, you know, like the whole thing about, about glory and the Netherlands and the, and the athletic commission with testing. Hey man, yep. let us know in the comments, please. Hey, I enjoy uh, commenting with you guys. Like I said, the last show that we had with the whole, with the whole glory 80 situation, you know, we had, we had, we had, we had one fan like kind of, kind of like from the Moroccans giving their point of view. We had another fan from the Polish side giving yeah. their point of view. Hey man, we love it. Come in, talk, just be kind to each other. Like I said, we just want to spread the love. All right. So Thank remember, guys, like, subscribe. Hey, and Glory, your boy, I'm so rocking. Glory 55. That was the last time I fought for you guys. Let me fight for you again. Just saying, if you need somebody. Man, get this guy a fight already. This is ludicrous. Get <sighs> stupid. But yeah, no, at, at the comments, I completely agree. Like our, our main, I, I'll I'll be the first to say it. I don't know everything. My my main motivation in this sport is that I really love this sport. I'm calm, I'm excited about this sport. I'm excited to talk about it. But I'll also admit, I don't know everything. So if I'm wrong, call me out on it. You can be rude. I don't care. <laughs> be nice to Brandon. You can be rude to me. <laughs> So from the number one rated show week over week on the Fighters First Network, my name's Tim Wheaton, joined by Brandon Catino. Any last words, Brandon? Hey, man, guys. Uh, like I said, just enjoy the fights, and uh, we'll see you. We'll see you guys uh, next time around. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much for your time.